uh, Lake Wales Main Streets, Facebook, and so forth. Now you can also ask questions and get a more detailed look at the drawings of the work in progress tomorrow, two different ways. From 9 a.m. to 2 p.m., you can stop by 220 Park Avenue, and Karen Thompson, your Main Street Director and CRA Deputy Director, will be there in person. So in real life, not Zoom, if you want, you can go look at the drawings. They're printed out large on easels, as you see here in the picture. And uh, of course, we ask you to wear a mask and practice social distance. Uh, but you can drop in anytime between 9 a.m. and 2 p.m. Get a good look at these drawings, ask Karen questions. She'll also have us available uh, via phone and Zoom to uh, bring into any conversations where we can be helpful. Meanwhile, during that same time slot, but from 11.30 to 1.30, Jay and I will have virtual office hours. And what we mean by that is we'll have a Zoom session set up. You can join us via Zoom. Uh, if you sent your e used your email to log into tonight's presentation, you will get an email later tonight uh, or early tomorrow morning that will give you a link you can use to join us tomorrow via Zoom. So think about it overnight, come up with a great question. When you sit up in the middle of the night, uh, between 11.30 and 1.30, you can go to Zoom using the link you receive in the new email. And Jay and I will be there. We'll also be uh, connected with Michael Manning, the city's project director over in City Hall, and with Karen Thompson. And uh, we'll have time for one-on-one -on -one conversations, a close look at the drawings, and all of that. So we're just about to, it's time to begin. I'll uh, get us rolling here. I'm sharing my screen, but I'm Victor Dover, uh, Town Planner and Urban Designer with Dover Colon Partners. And uh, what you're attending is a virtual open house to look at the Park Avenue street design. Uh, with me are the engineers from Chastain Skillman and landscape architect uh, Jay Hood and his sidekick Bruce Hall from SNME. Uh, we were working on the redesign of Park Avenue. Karen Thompson, uh, your Main Street Director, is also on the line along with Vice Mayor Gibson. I saw we also have uh, Commissioner Terry Gibson and others, Brian Buskirk, your Main Street Chair, and others have joined us in tonight's event. Karen, would you like to unmute and say hello? Sure, can everybody hear me? Yes, indeed, Come loud and clear. All right, thank you so much. And, and um, I'm just gonna be very brief. I wanna go ahead, I know if uh, many of our commissioners are on, if not all, and um, I want to send out a thank you to them. Um, thank you for supporting this project. Uh, thank you for being all in. Um, I want to thank Main Street, Main Street for champion, championing uh, this, this plan and for being stewards of this plan. Um, but most importantly, I want to thank the, the citizens, um, the community, the business owners that are on Park Avenue and in downtown. Um, I know that, you know, saying things like we're in this together and, and um, take the village at this time may seem a little um, cliche, but in all honesty, when you're working in downtown, you know, everybody's affected and it, it truly does take a village. So we appreciate your, your enthusiasm, your support. Um, we're going to get through it and, um, and, and, and be um, have a beautiful revitalized downtown. So um, with me, I have our interim city manager, uh, James Slayton and Michael Manning, man management analyst. Um, James, is, would you like to say hello? Greet everybody? Yeah, I'll be brief. Look, I can just echo Karen's comments. There's not a whole lot I can add to that. Uh, I'm just, uh, I think we're excited about getting closer to getting this design work done so that we can break ground and I can assure everybody we're going to break ground on this project. <laughs> That's it. Very good. So, That's so great to hear. We're going to James. hand it over to you and Jay and, and we're, we're ready. We're, we're ready good. to get rolling. I see uh, Commissioner Curtis Gibson has also joined in. Uh, uh, Andy Ogantola from Polk State College is on uh, in tonight's event. We have uh, transportation engineer Rick Hall has joined us. I mentioned earlier uh, we had um, Commissioner Terry Howell. I'm, uh, there's a uh, Megan McLaughlin uh, has joined us. Hi, hi Megan. Uh, so thank you for everybody who has joined in so far. Um, I'll, um, are you uh, are you ready to to see what this is all about? 
I think I see them nodding, so. Okay, well, let's do it. All right, sharing my screen. Um, first, remember that tomorrow is the continuation of what we do today. If you want to stop in, go to Zoom, 1130 to 130 or 220 East Park Avenue in real life from 9 to 2 and take a closer look. We will be asking you poll questions uh, shortly. Um, and uh, Brenda Diaz, I'm gonna call on you momentarily to share your screen and ask our poll questions. And the way you get set up for that is right now, you can send a text message to 22333. And the message we want you to send is Dovercol 516, D-O-V-E-R-K-O-H-L 516. That will get you into the poll. And after that, all you do is just type your answer, the letter B if, uh, if uh, you like B better than A, B, or C, that sort of thing. Uh, just to remind everybody, this is part of implementing Lake Wales Connected as a as the shortest possible recap. Remember, there's a vision for the Northwest, a vision for downtown. They come together into the plan we call Lake Wales Connected. And implementation step number one recommended in that plan adopted by your city leaders last year was to redesign and prepare construction-ready engineering documents for the remake of Park Avenue. Uh, between Scenic Highway and Wetmore. And I'm pleased to say that uh, in the latest thinking, uh, this will be expanded to include uh, refurbishment of um, the Market Commons and uh, the first uh, two blocks of Scenic Highway and the uh, Ridge Highway Scenic Trail. So this is a, a big time for getting Lake Wales Connected to go from a great idea on paper to a great idea period. I'm gonna turn it to uh, my longtime colleague, Jay Hood, landscape architect from SNME, to show us what, he, what he's got. And uh, now, before we start uh, with uh, Jay's presentation, why don't we get a quick check-in to see uh, who's here and test the polling. Brenda, would you like to share your screen and uh, do a first poll question? Brenda Diaz, uh, who is our all-powerful Zoom host tonight, has uh, shared her screen. And Brenda, you want to so, walk them through? How yeah, so work? everybody should have um, gotten the message I sent in the chat, if you guys need a reminder. You're going to be sending the message Dover Cole 516 to the number 22333. If anybody has any issues, it looks like we have people already answering. <laughs> so this one is our easy question. Um, <laughs> we have 50% says Gators. 52 now. So um, if everybody can see that. Um, so we'll be like asking a couple more questions and then at the end we'll have some more. If I don't know. My, my fellow hurricanes like Megan are going to start to feel outnumbered here a little bit. <laughs> by this group. All right. So now you see how the polling works. Mm -hmm. And actually as more people answer the the bars on the, the uh, screen will actually mm -hmm. move to the left and right uh, as, um, as more people weigh in. How many answers do you have so far on your dashboard, Brenda? Um, it doesn't show it yet, let me see. Oh, I still have more people answering. Um, oh yeah. Looks like the Seminoles are coming yeah. from behind now. They're, <laughs> so you see how this works? As we get more answers uh, to this question, then the, the poll itself will automatically update. So it's better oh. than watching CNN on election night. Um, if anyone has the, any issues, let me know in the chat and I, um, we can send you tips on how to join in. So you have to use your phone. Everyone has to use your iPhone or your Droid or um, you don't don't do it on the chat. So I see a couple of people are doing it in the chat. So use your phone to text the answers to us. So you're going to be sending the that message with that number to that number. So, let's so like I told you, the questions are going to start really easy and then they're going to start mm -hmm. to get harder. Yeah, I would do this one as you know, a throwaway question just to make sure everybody understands how the technology is working. Mm -hmm. And uh, so thanks everybody for, for jumping yeah. in there. The Gators, 
The Gators probably don't think that was a throwaway question, though. <laughs> Apparently not. I, I will say uh, one thing you should note is at the bottom of your Zoom screen, there are two buttons in the center of your screen. One says chat. Let's use that for technical troubleshooting. If you're having trouble making something work, you can type a message to Brenda. She'll help you sort it out as the presentation goes along. And the other one, just to the left of that, says Q&A, question and answer. And that's the one where if you have a suggestion, a comment, or a specific question, you'd like us to hit landscape architect with uh, J hood with at the end of his presentation uh, we'll gather those up and then we'll get to as many of them tonight as possible so use the Q&A button to type your question and that's uh, how we'll know to ask him well right. are you ready for the next question try this yeah let's do it one. all right what is your interest in Park Avenue there's four different are you an interested citizen do you own a business there do you own a property there or more than one of the above? So we have lots of interested citizens so far. Yeah. I see now that now this time the bar, the bars are moving back and forth a little more ambitiously. Mm -hmm. And it's a more interesting question anyway. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you still get any more answers? Brenda, we'll give us a few seconds. Yeah, give it a few more seconds to get give people a chance to answer. I always like to know who's in the room, and this is how we find out uh, which how many of you are in uh, the category of, of interested citizen stakeholders or folks who have a, a business there now or folks who own property. Mm -hmm. uh, but the answer D is interesting too. It tells us where there's overlap. Yeah. All right, so last question for the ones in I'll just make a comment about the question about the what's your interest since we have an overwhelming majority of participants uh who uh, don't own property or business uh, and they kind of outnumber the folks who do i hope that you'll all you know sort of step out of your own traditional role a little bit tonight and try to put on the hat of your neighbor who is trying to run a business um, um, a lot of them especially with the COVID-19 pandemic may be um, uh, struggling a bit right now or, or working twice as hard as normal uh, to keep everything going. And you know, so we want to look for the best plan that's in the balanced public interest. And it's in your, in your interest as a voter and a citizen or a resident of Lake Wales, uh, but also works for the, for the business community. Uh, now, I described the process earlier by which we created the Lake Wales Connected Plan. There was a, um, a week long design week with a storefront set up. There were kickoff events. There was um, one, one heck of a Main Street uh, wing ding bash on Market Commons uh, midwinter. And then, at, and then also a series of serious and formal uh, public presentations and hearings prior to the plan's adoption. And we want to get a sense of how many people are participating in their first event on this and how much, how many of you uh, have been participating already. So when you started to hit a balance of, uh, or you think the answers are slowing, just tell me, Brenda, and we'll. Yeah, it looks like, yeah, um, looks like we had most people were able to type in an answer. Thanks. Right. So up sharing so you can share the presentation. All right, very good. I'm sharing the screen, uh, Jay, but this is uh, this is your show. So you just give me the cue next, and you'll take a few seconds to refresh on your end. You'll have an idea when you have the next slide up. All right, and and, and what I'll tell you all is is Brenda and Dover are the uh, the Zoom experts for sure. So uh, as we practiced, it became obvious that you know it'd be really great if if uh, Brenda and Victor really. Uh, uh, advance the slides for me, uh, so, uh, so that's, they're in control. So again, uh, bear with us as I say next. So uh, go ahead and advance, Victor. Now take a few seconds to refresh on your end and you'll know when you got it. All right, so uh, from, from our design approach, uh, I just wanna go over this very quickly. We just really wanted to start with the desire and what does success look like? And, and again, what we can say is that the, the Lake Wales connection connected really lays out um, what success looks like for the for the Park Avenue redevelopment. 
The next phase is discovery. That's when we do our research, analysis, comparables. And then we don't want to really start design until we've done those things. And so we have now gone through a lot of that. We've started the design. And, and today is really about the discussion. Um, as we advance past this, then we go into the documentation phase which is really that's where we're putting together those construction documents so that we can look forward to the implementation. Next slide. Um, so we took some of the uh, big ideas out of Lake Wales and kind of uh, Lake Wales connected and said, how can we apply that to, uh, to, to Park Avenue? And I think the idea of the city as a, as a garden is huge. And, and the other thing is that this needs to be that 1900s, early 1900s historic modern, historic Main Street. But, but we want to modernize it with up-to-date technology, transportation thinking, and stormwater. Everything needs to be designed from building face to building face. And, and we need to think about those with intentional decisions. Comfort has got to be a priority. You know, Victor has stressed trees and so, Part of the comfort of this, uh, this, this corridor is gonna be the trees, so we've gotta make, make it so that uh, in this urban situation, we can put the best environment for the trees forward. Uh, we need to be connected, flexible, and then this idea of a very simple canvas of materials, but we wanna end up with a really rich composition uh, in the end. Next, so from a discovery phase, uh, we, we want to understand the context. We've spent time out on the avenue, but we also want to learn from other projects that uh, uh, what, what are the other things that communities and cities are doing across the country. So when you look at the existing conditions that you've got, there's really kind of four areas. One is that intersection at 17. You've got Park Avenue from Scenic Highway to First. Uh, Park Avenue is completely different when you go from first to Wetmore. And then we've got our first street piece there in front of the, uh, in front of the hotel. Next. Um, so again, part of the discovery is what have other people done? And so this is Winter Park, Florida. Uh, they've got a Park Avenue too, as Victor said. And uh, uh, this, Victor and I actually worked on this Park Avenue also. and and a lot of the lessons that we've learned there, I think we can bring, uh, bring here to Lake Web. Again, some of the thinking on transportation and technology have advanced uh, since this was done you know, close to 20 years ago. Um, so, so this slide is actually the, okay, the, yeah, there we go. Next slide, please, Victor. Uh, just to, again, when we talked about the simple canvas, but that rich texture. So this is what Park Avenue looks like. Again. No, Jay, uh, I think you're too modest. When you talk about the other Park Avenue in Winter Park, you, you, you don't brag enough and tell them that you're the one who figured out the street tree planting detail that made it possible to bring back the oak canopy. And at the same time, not buckle the sidewalks, make, six, make thriving trees that got big and, had, and produced a lot of shade and not buckle the street. And uh, all those years ago, and, I've, and you having done that has transformed street redesign in, in, in Florida, really. Um, and so we can see what it happens. Here's 20 years worth of growth on trees that were planted at Jay's direction on the other Park Avenue uh, in Lamp Park. Yeah, and, and, and again, the simplicity of the materials, um, this was at a time when people were doing a lot of pavers on the sidewalks and lots of fancy patterns. But we looked at what Winter Park was about and that the town of Winter Park and and it was really about simplicity and elegance. So they had brick streets throughout the neighborhoods that kept the traffic calm and then just very simple understated um, uh, concrete sidewalks. But the interest is in those vertical elements, you know, in the shops and the windows, the tables and chairs, the signage. And it's doing those things right, spending time and effort on those that makes it pay, pay off. Fairhope, Alabama, this is a, a very landscape centric town. And when you look at it, it's, it has a very unique character. And again, when we go back to those principles uh, that the Olmstead brothers put out there, as we garden a city, I think from, 
from the way that this, this Park Avenue looks, it needs to have a commitment to the landscape. And that goes through the maintenance as well, but, but, but it starts with that design. Um, in Bainbridge Island, Washington, uh, they have rain gardens, but again, it's a very diverse plant palette. And again, again with, the, uh, with the legacy to Bach Tower Garden, we think that that planting interest is gonna be very important. Next. Uh, Winter Garden is also a project that, uh, uh, or a community that, that Bruce Hall and myself uh, worked at, and we took some of those Park Avenue lessons and applied them to here. We reintroduced brick streets, just the simple sidewalks and shade trees. And, and this also integrated multiple modes of transportation. If you've heard about complete streets, uh, we were actually doing a complete street, but we didn't know it was called that at the point in time, that point in time. So it was the integration of the bike trail that has really helped enliven these businesses. And it's, it's full of activity right now and uh, a very successful Main Street uh, that, that really has uh, caught up with, uh, with Winter Park in a lot of areas. So as I mentioned before, the focus areas, we're gonna go through these one at a time and uh, we'll go through them uh, at, at a pace that uh, we'll show you what we're thinking, but we wanna leave room for questions at the end of this. And the first area is, is Park Avenue and that's gonna be from First to Scenic. Then we're gonna do that section from Wetmore to First and look at First Street and then we'll go back to the Scenic Highway intersection. Next. So, and, and it was interesting, one of the questions that came through was asked the question, are we really gonna have cobblestones on the streets? And um, when we were out on site in one of the alleys, that's the picture on the left, we actually saw that there was brick underneath that, uh, those alleyways. And so the question is, wow, do we have bricks under these streets and could we reclaim those bricks? Victor, in his research, found this picture. And this is actually of Stewart, but that pile in the background, that's the bricks that used to be uh, on both Stewart and on Park. And uh, so, so we did have brick streets at one time. We're striving to bring them back. It's going to depend on a couple things. It's going to depend on the final cost estimates and those types of things. But again, we think uh, from the authenticity of what this town uh, is and what it can be and, and, and celebrating that history and heritage, we are really going to try very hard and, and so far in the plan we are designing it as uh, pavers on the streets. Next. So in Lake Wales Connected, this was essentially the cross section that was shown and, and as you all know we've got angled parking out there right now but we're reclaiming a lot of the space that's dedicated to cars and putting that into, uh, into pedestrian space and space for landscape. Next slide. So this is what's, uh, what's out there today, uh, this cross section. So we've got about a 20 foot travel lane, which is a one way travel lane, which interestingly enough, that 20 feet is actually wide enough to do bi-directional traffic. Then you've got your angled parking and uh, you know, but pretty narrow sidewalk spaces on either side. What we've learned on those other projects is that having right sized sidewalks really allows for the outdoor dining and the other activities to occur. If you go to the next slide. Um, so this is, we went through a number of options, uh, met with uh, some of the stakeholders in the city and we actually landed on this as our preferred option. And there are some differences uh, on this plan than what was, or on this cross section than what was shown uh, in the Lake Wales Connected. Part of that's because we've got better information. As it turns out, we ended up with five extra feet once we had everything surveyed. So uh, that allows us to have a little bit more space um, in the area, on the, uh, uh, in the sidewalk. So and Jay, I think it might be useful for everybody if we just toggle these a couple of times. I'm going to back it up okay, one sure, side. Sure. I'm going to take it back to the existing conditions. And yeah. as you continue to describe what's here, I'm just going to flip it back and forth a few times so people can see what we've got. All right, sure. And, and so as we, as we look at this, again, that 20 feet is the right width for two-way traffic. So we've uh, introduced that two-way. And again, the idea of having a brick street is very important. Um, but then we've, we've changed the uh, angled parking into parallel parking. 
one of the things that we've done, and we talked about making it 21st century in terms of our thought about environmental and, and stormwater, what we're looking at introducing is actually pervious pavement in that parallel parking lane. But, but probably the biggest change that we're looking at is this idea of the introduction of a curbless street. And so the curbless street, basically instead of having a raised curb, uh, we're actually saying that we can really enhance the quality of life by making this a barrier-free uh, a, a barrier-free street. That does a couple things for us. It gives us a lot of flexibility for events. You can even take the parking spaces and turn those into outdoor dining areas uh, you know, for events as well. Um, it really adds to the placemaking. Just from the standpoint of safety, uh, it may sound counterintuitive, but, but people actually drive slower on these streets because you're, you're putting everybody on the same footing. And it, there's also been studies that the economics, uh, the, you know, the property values on these curbless streets actually increase. The picture that you're looking at right now, this is uh, Clematis Avenue in West Palm Beach, which is, uh, Victor, I don't know if you want, want to talk about that. This is one of Victor's projects that he's just recently completed. This is a redesign of West Palm Beach's equivalent of Park Avenue, their main street through the center of their downtown. And we um, we picked up on and continued what others had started. They had, um, they had us right size the space for cars in the middle of the street. Uh, and that made room for the trees that were missing. So you can see some young trees here that were just planted uh, in the last couple of years. But it's been a big success. And one of the things that's different between Clematis Street and say Park Avenue and Winter Park or uh, or the Main Street in Winter Garden is that is this curbless street design that he's talking about. And we've really seen how, just how much more flexible it makes the street. Of course, we also eliminate a lot of trip hazards um, and so there's um, there are a bunch of benefits that turn that as it turns out to going curbless. So this is something that is um, we just we, we just really know when we did Park Avenue and Winter Park to the extent that we that we know it now. Um, and uh, so when Jay came on uh, in an exchange between Jay Hood, landscape architect, you've been listening to, and Karen Thompson, your Main Street director. Um, I can't remember which one of them blurted it out first, but they said, well, what if we could just do the whole thing on Park, Park Avenue and Kerbalus? And, uh, and that is what Jay's about to show you. So the Clematis Street example, which has turned out hugely successful, safe, shaded, slow, um, is uh, it's emboldened us to try that idea. Jay? Yep, yeah, go ahead. And, and yeah, and, and so this is the existing condition that we've got uh, in this section right now. If you go to the next one, this is essentially the look that we're uh, we're proposing, and you know the shade trees are important. Having space for the shade trees are important. One of the things that I will mention is that we we've, we've got an asymmetrical uh, cross section in here. You can go to the next one, Victor. Um, and what I mean by that is, if you look on the the because of the way since we run east west from the, on the north side is where the sun really beats down. So that's where we, we're putting the, the larger shade trees. And on the, uh, on the south side of the street, where we've got narrower sidewalks, but we still have, uh, I think they're 13 foot sidewalks. That's where we're introducing a, a smaller tree or a flowering tree. And we've got those in pairs in the planters. Uh, but, but anyway, we, we also, in terms of trying to garden this, uh, garden the streetscape, you can see in this, this image the planter pots that, that are on the right that we uh, would, would hope that the, the, the businesses will also uh, really engage in gardening this, this street, but also the hanging baskets that are integrated into the light poles as well. We're also looking at the light poles to help us with uh, other better technologies as well. Uh, again, just to, to bring up the, the uh, high tech nature of this. We think having Wi-Fi in the downtown is going to be extremely important. So we're, we're thinking about how do we integrate that too so that people can have access to their devices as they're, um, as they're uh, relaxing on the street. Uh, this, is, this is at uh, Market Plaza where the, uh, where the clock tower is. Uh, and again, 
Because we're curbless, you do need to put some um, uh, barriers as the cars are turning. And in this case, we've got uh, some bollard bowls that are actually, uh, uh, again, trying to add, add planting and color and texture into the landscape uh, of the area. Next. Uh, you know, this is another view at the mid-block crossings. Even though, even though it's going to be very friendly to cross any time that you want anywhere, uh, we think having designated some mid-block crossings is also important. Uh, one of the other things that I'll, I'll note from a stormwater perspective, I mentioned the pervious uh, pavers and parallel parking areas, uh, but also uh, we're looking at rain gardens in uh, some of the islands that bump out into the paving. So you can see the small slot in the curb right there. And, and so essentially, we want to capture storm water. We want it to percolate into the ground so that end up taxing the stormwater systems and getting into the, into the lakes of the area. Uh, we, want to, we want to allow the, the maximum amount of that to percolate into the ground earlier. And, and not just pipe it and outfall into our into our lakes. Next, in the aerial view, where you can kind of see how everything uh, fits together. But again, we're very excited about this this look and the transformation uh, that can occur, uh, especially in this section. This section is the you know is the gym, and 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 you can see that there's room now for that outdoor dining to occur. So, uh, uh, again. In the storage for the cars, it's now uh, uh, we're, we're dedicating more of the area for the activities out into the uh, into that sidewalk zone. And in Sanford, Florida, we've done this with curbless streets as well. And and folks actually uh, can lease from the city a parking space so they can their tables and chairs out into that parking space. And in this case, because it's curbless, we could we could do that with again having no trip hazard and a, and a barrier for free access out there. Next. Um, the next section that we're talking about, this is now uh, still on Park Avenue, but, but now we're going from wet mortar first. And a completely different uh, uh, typical section. It's very wide as you all, uh, as you all know. And um, it, it has, uh, again, one way traffic with angled parking. Uh, very wide, very wide lanes, and so there's there's room for us to play with. One of the interesting things that we've noted, though, is that the property line goes about down the center of the street, uh, but luckily the city has a lot of the, the property uh, on the south side of the street as well, and, and so we're designing this uh, curb to curb, but also thinking about the city city properties as well. Um, and this has got, again, a standard curve on both sides and no, no trees, no shade. Uh, next. So this, was, this is the proposed section that we've got. And, and so we've, we've, we know that we're going to be taking some of the uh, parking away uh, in that first block. And, and, and the benefit, though, certainly outweighs, I think, that those, those few spaces that need to be displaced. Uh, but so we want to keep the angle parking, uh, certainly on the north side at least, um, in this in this block. And again, we're looking at those as being pervious. And um, in this case, though, we actually have a curb along that edge. And one of the reasons that we want to do that is with the angled parking, it's nice to have that barrier of a curb uh, because. A curbless street works when you're going parallel to it, but if you're turning perpendicular to it, you really want to have that, that curb in there. So we've gone curbed on the north side, but the south side, again, we're going to be curbless on there. So it's kind of a hybrid. Um, but what that will, will allow to happen is the vents can, can happen from the south side, especially if in the future there's a civic center kind of activity that happens uh, uh, on this block and it'll allow this space to, to, to just flow from the, the development on the south side out into the street uh, um, in, in, in events and uh, for events and such. So Jay, I'm gonna do the same thing here just for explanation purposes. Yeah. Run it one more time before and after. 
Yeah, and you can see, again, having that tree cover is just going to make yeah. a huge difference. With that extra right-of-way, we can get even a, a, a better uh, tree cover, again, kind of uh, in the spirit of gardening the city and, and making that public realm a shaded, comfortable, uh, a shaded. Go ahead and go to the next one. So this is, uh, this is what uh, that area looks like today. And uh, if you go to the next one, uh, Victor, uh, this is this is what we can can visualize uh, this stretch being. And again, the shade trees make a tremendous difference. Uh, I think opening this back up to two-way traffic. And again, we 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 don't need to uh, uh, widen the driving lanes because right now the driving lanes are are are, are oversized. So we still have a twenty-foot driving lane, which is which is ample space for cars to go two ways. But it really helps calm and slow down the traffic. The benefit I should I should mention is the angle parking makes it very convenient for the post office, which does generate a number of uh, a, a number of trips, and and so you want to have that easy, convenient parking uh, in front of the post office. But but do it in a way that's sensitive to uh, again the goals of, of 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 the city. We've got a couple more. Go ahead. Uh, so you can cycle through these. This is. This is now kind of an aerial look, uh, looking toward the west, and you can see uh, the large number of shade trees in there, and 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 working to preserve those trees at the post office. There's a couple of big trees, so we've instead of put canopy right underneath those, we've we've got small trees there. Um, and and we'll talk about the first street intersection in, in the next phase. So go ahead. Uh, th this is a uh, this is another view. Uh, as I said, looking at the post office, we exist uh, keeping those there, and and again, ample sidewalks so that as those uh, businesses uh, redevelop, uh, there's a the large vacant at the at the west end. There's a large vacant parcel. Uh, so again, we've got wide sidewalks here uh, that will be really conducive to the continued attention. Of, uh, of downtown toward the west uh, in this block. And here's another aerial, aerial view uh, looking down um, uh, at, at toward the, the first street intersection. Next. Uh, now we're actually uh, look at, at first street a little bit. And, and Victor, um, I, don't, I don't know if you want to talk about the vision for First Street that we picked up, but, but part of your Lake Wales uh, Connected big idea. Sure. Happy to. You know, one of the ideas in Lake Wales Connected is that um, while Stewart and Park and Orange and Crystal and Central are all important, uh, First Street has a unique role because it's the link to the Northwest neighborhood. And as we can begin to imagine in the near future, the redevelopment of the Grove Manor. Uh, public housing project as a mixed income uh, neighborhood and uh, and so off we it became clear that first was a simple kind of street and one of the things it can do is link north south it's one of the longest streets in the city you link north south not just for people in cars and trucks or walking but for those moving back and forth on two wheels so the bike track that's envisioned uh, in Lake Wales connected for for first street uh, here in the old Seminole Hotel, just a couple blocks to the north, was a, an idea for uh, making this link real. And so in Lake Wales Connected, we visualized how the street and, and its eventual reconstruction could accommodate a new tree line that would be and give an all, all ages and abilities location, not just for walking, but also for biking, um, and north south along first. So of course, that brings us to the all important question. What happens where it crosses uh, Park Avenue, um, forming a kind of main and main intersection, and in front of the Walesville Hotel? Okay. Yeah. So uh, this is the existing condition in that area. That's, that was the, um, uh, and you can see that the hotel is is on the left, and and it's a fairly barren area. But but one of the things that that Victor had anticipated as well. And, and if you could toggle back, um, you can see that there's an extra wide lane on the 
on, on the west side, plus there's a turn lane. And so again, uh, this idea that there's a lot of space in that right of way that's dedicated to the automobiles. So uh, when you look at the preferred spin, um, you can see now that, and, and we think looking at the traffic, we can do away with the turn lane. We're fairly confident of that. But now we can um, really start to provide more use on this, on this section of First Street. Now we've been talking about shade trees all along, but because of the wells built, the architecture on that, we, we, we felt that having a couple specimen palms is actually an appropriate uh, uh, response in this, in this area. But, but that idea of going curbless in this area, again, felt very, uh, uh, felt, felt right to us uh, for, for many of the same reasons. So uh, we don't have pavers on the streets themselves, but we do in the, in the parallel parking spaces. Uh, again, we've got the pervious pavers in the parallel space that's um, you know, on the east side, but on the west side where that cycle track comes in. Uh, what we don't want to do with bicycles, what uh, uh, traffic engineers have done with, uh, with cars. We don't want to make it so that they feel free to go full speed. And we think in, in this particular area in front of the hotel, we actually want to slow them down. We want them to be aware of their surroundings as well. So we've actually created what we call a shared space. So it's a, it's a mixed space. Um, and you can see we've got a, a drop off at the hotel that's, that, that has some bollards. But again, so this, we, we, we picture a lot of activity is gonna be happening in this zone, but we do still wanna delineate uh, that space where the bicycles can go. So if you go to the next slide, um, we're, we're showing essentially some, some flush or slightly raised delineators that, that show the area. It's gonna be, this is, the, this is the path that people are traversing through, uh, but we'll, we'll do that in a subtle way in a, in a way that's, uh, again, very respectful, a way that uh, shows that detailed design. So this is the existing condition that we have in that block right now today. And then if you go to the next one, this is, this is how we envision this street uh, in, in the future uh, when we're implemented. And, and we think that you know, the paving pattern in the area in front of the hotel, again, we find that as a differentiated area. So this is one of the areas where we're not gonna have just the straight on um, concrete pavement. Uh, we think that this block is, again, is going to be an important block when this uh, renovation gets complete. And, and it's, it's when, not if. And, uh, and again, we think that this can be a very exciting uh, and, and really addition that helps enliven uh, the downtown area. Uh, this is a look in the street. You can see how the, the cycle track is, uh, is crossing there on the far side. And, and this is also the first look at the traffic signals. The, the traffic signals that you're seeing here, we're going to do everything that we can to keep that as um, unimposing as possible. If there's a traffic signal there, I will say right now we are looking at whether we even need to have a traffic signal in that area. That decision hasn't been finalized yet. We're still doing some more uh, traffic work on it. But, uh, but again, I think, again, it's a design orientation and attention to detail uh, that's gonna pull the entire composition together. So here's an, an, an aerial view looking down at the intersection as well as uh, that, that, that plaza, that shared space. And, and uh, we're envisioning when the hotel is fully functioning and have great spaces to, uh, sit and lounge and also to, uh, to dine. Uh, and again, ample landscape areas that will allow us to have that diversity, that texture, that color uh, that's going to set uh, the Lake Wales downtown apart from, from all others. Next. And, and then uh, finally, I wanna go back to the scenic highway intersection. This is the last kind of focus area and we're uh, starting to run a little short on time. Uh, but much like First Street, you can see how wide it is. Now, uh, we know that there's concern with parking. Well, there's a lot of parking um, on the east side. So, so one of the big questions is how do we connect it? How do we make that simpler? So this is kind of a staged piece. So you can see 
uh, what's existing right now. And it's a pretty imposing intersection. And so really what we're trying to do is humanize it. So if you, if you go ahead there and then skip to the, the next one, you can see if we can, if, if we can get this narrowed so it's a simple two-lane road, have proper crosswalks, it now becomes very close. So that, that parking becomes closer, easier to access. And, and, and we think as this becomes a walkable area, a walkable intersection, people won't think that much about having to make that crossing. So this is a view of what that, uh, what that intersection can look like. And again, bringing those planter bollards uh, into, uh, into the curbless area. Um, go ahead and go to the next one, Victor. And, and this is uh, now looking on 17. You can see what, or the highway. this is what it looks like today. And this is how we envision it. But we've got bulb outs that really shorten that crossing distance. Uh, and that's, that's really gonna be critical. And again, bringing in shade uh, as, a, as a major component uh, that, that's gonna, yield dividends for generation and there's an, an aerial view of, uh, of this particular area next uh, just we'll do we'll touch very quickly on some of the uh, some of the overall plans and again this is this is the detail plan and if you really want to see it up close uh, again uh, you can you can go to the go to the storefront or uh, come into our office hours tomorrow and we can go through your individual shop. Uh, we'll have it on hand during the office hours so we can zoom in really tight and look yeah. at the exact spot in front of your business or the intersection you're most concerned with uh, in the uh, session tomorrow morning or from 1130 to 1.30. Yeah, and then uh, if you go to the next, uh, the next two, we've kind of blown up uh, into some uh, areas where we've got some enlargement. So you can see some of the detail of how it, how it uh, rolls out. Again, you can see the smaller trees on the south side, the shade trees um, on the, on the uh, north. Side. And you can see Market Plaza. Market Plaza hasn't been designed yet. Uh, that was just recently uh, added into the scope, but we will be working on that. So stay tuned for a special meeting on that. The idea is that we, we will work on that design and then bring that into this construction document passage. Uh, package and then this is the first to wetmore piece and and one of the things that you'll note is that um, uh, just just past the hotel um, uh, you can see the city owns that that uh, kind of large uh, swath and so we're really looking at this as a great LA and a border guard um, to uh, set the set the stage for the redevelopment of, uh, of that parcel and the connect Lake Wales Connected Plan, it shows a parking deck happening in this space as well as an auditorium. So, and with that, it's probably time for uh, the, the questions. So, Jay, while uh, while we're looking at questions, I thought it might be useful to share what you've just made with that 3D model. Now, the first time through this, it might go a little choppy on your end, and then just let it roll, and it'll get a little smoother or a little sharper as yeah. we go. Just yeah, to confirm, so Jay, is the animation rolling like you like? It, 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 it looks pretty good. Hopefully everybody on the other ends uh, can see it as well. Uh, but, but here we are walking on Park Avenue, walking towards the, walking towards the west, towards uh, First Street. And again, you can see the, the generous planters that uh, allow for a lot of color. This is one of the mid-block crosswalks. And you can see uh, the... Uh, the, the area that's dedicated for uh, you know outdoor dining and such. This is we as we're coming up onto Market Plaza, and again, that we put a placeholder design in there for this animation. Uh, but uh, I'll bring it back. We're we'll get until design soon. Yeah, we kind of stopped. I'll bring it. I'll bring it back up in a second. Just need okay. to close the window here and deal with Zoom. Bear with me. Um, but we're, we're also, and, and one of the things in the, um, uh, in, in the store, I think we're going to have uh, the video scrolling all the time as well. And, and actually the video is a good way to three dimensionally walk through there. So you can, uh, uh, have access to the video so you can, 
uh, you know, move it back and forth to various uh, various spots where you see things that might be of interest. So. Um, yeah, Zoom is making me drop it every once in a while here, but it's, it's okay, uh, yeah, yeah, it yeah. should be running again now. Do you see it? Yes, it is. It is up. It's a. Uh, Very good. It's, it, now it's uh, now it's running again. You can now see the old box for a second there. Okay. Some questions. Uh, one of the one of the ones I, I like a, a lot, and I'm glad you already touched on it. We got really early on um, from Amy was about where will, where will everyone park. And what's useful about this animation as we visualize the street after all the changes that are envisioned is there's still a lot of parking. I mean, just between, um, I think there um, would still be 18 to 20 parking spaces, um, which is a reduction from the number that are there, but there's still a lot of them. And then when you get west um, of first, there are a, a lot more in this, in this current plan. So. Um, it's a natural instinct to wonder, wait a minute, they changed diagonal parking to parallel parking. They took it off of one side for part of the length. Uh, where's everybody going to park? And the answer is don't, not to worry. There is, in fact, plenty of parking in the neighborhood as a whole and lots of parking remaining on Park Avenue after the reconfiguration. What we're not doing is letting parking be the tail that wags the dog. So that means we get creative and look for ways to make parking that's there seem more useful and accessible. When big parking supply is located just to the east of uh, of Scenic Highway, and so um, it doesn't feel very accessible because the intersection is uh, no fun to cross right now, right? So um, that that uh, means that redesigning the intersection of Park Avenue and Highway 17 is part of the project. Um, uh, you know, comes with uh, with doing this and when we do uh, this area where the animation is showing right now will feel a lot more nearby parking spaces so um, and then also uh, of course the question about garbage pickup if there's no alley uh, you know the Lake Wales connected conjecture uh, for, does forecast a time when you will be instead of the empty storefronts or underutilized property on Park Avenue and start up and it'll all be working and you'll still be looking for new ways to add value and add experiences. And by then, and looking into the alleys for uh, activating even more street edges or making more interesting public spaces and places to walk will probably be the right thing to do. But even then, mm -hmm. it's possible to open the alleys up for places and still maintain the garbage and utilities, mm -hmm. loading and unloading that take place in the alley now. Now, um, I, we got a question, Jay, which I think uh, is a good one for you for your, uh, as a scholar of the history of landscape architecture. Our uh, friends at Lake Wales Heritage asked a question about how they can support from outside. Um, you know, what's the, how can they make this go farther? I think is part of the question that, that Robert is asking there. And also, um, you know, how does this, how can they help with this? So Lake Wales Heritage, as you know, is leading the charge on uh, remembering the work of the Olmsted brothers and, uh, and the Olmsted history and legacy in Lake Wales. What do you think, Jay? How, how could a group like Lake Wales Heritage best support this plan? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, there's there's actually a number of number of ways that they can do that. I, I think one of it is just to keep the the idea of the importance of the land up um, because it's a it's a commitment. I mean, let's let's face it. We all spend time in our yards. It doesn't happen, uh, you know. Maintenance doesn't happen by itself, and that's. I, I think the maintenance commitment to get um, to have that commitment to maintain the landscape out uh, in the Park Avenue uh, corridor and actually throughout the city uh, is is extremely important in our early meetings. Uh, we've talked about having uh, access to horticulturists, have people who are specialized in that in the city. Uh, I think return on that benefit. So I think that that's, that's one of the areas is just to uh, keep it at the forefront of people's minds. I think the other one is education. I, I, you know, what I would love to have out here, which we've got this in Winter Garden as, as well, is, is the storytelling. How can we... Stormstead Brothers, 
and and the the the, the legacy of uh, of landscape architecture on this corridor. Um, I think when we start to look, there's a couple art opportunities that we've already identified in the plan. What can that say? What what kind of tribute can we have? And also, when we look at Market Plaza, that's an area where we again see people that are going to be uh, stop they're going to spend time there that's a great opportunity to tell that story so helping us to tell that story through the through the design elements uh, i think is, is is another great way to uh, to karen and, um, and and michael and from the city and james if you're still with us uh, a couple of questions have come in about the Walesville hotel and um, so karen uh, may put you on the spot but just to, in quick recap, could you unmute and just uh, give, give us an update? What is the latest Walesville Hotel? Uh, what do we know and not know yet about uh, its uh, near term future? Give Karen Thompson a second to find the mute button. Unmute. That could be a question for you, Karen, or you could toss it to James if that's better. Y'all decide. Yeah, yeah. You know, we're, we all. I mean, it. It is what it is. We remain hopeful. Um, it, it is in the hands of private ownership. So, um, you know, we'll we'll help it any way we can. You know, at this point, I, I really don't have anything new to add other than, um, you know, hopefully it will happen. No. So, um, go ahead. Okay. Well, well, I was going to share some of. Uh, some of our experiences, and, and, and I'll use, I'll use uh, uh, downtown Winter Garden as an example. We had a, a, a hotel in downtown Winter Garden that was totally underutilized, and, uh, but be, because it wasn't a place to be, it wasn't a location, it, it didn't do uh, much business. Um, and when the streetscapes uh, constructed, West Orange Trail came through, and the businesses and the restaurants came, then the people came and it became a destination. And, and that was actually the catalyst for a lot of the private development. If you're gonna invest in your property, you, you, you wanna get a return. Uh, and so I think that the commitment of um, you know, investment, like projects like, like, uh, like First, First Street and like uh, Park Avenue through here, I think that's going to drive interest and start to make the numbers work for that redevelopment. I stayed at the Edgewater Hotel a few times in Winter Garden. It's a great historic hotel experience. Um, so um, never say never when it comes to the Walesville Hotel. I think this is a lesson that we're all learning. When we started Lake Wales Connected, we got a lot of questions about the Walesville Hotel. And what I figured out very quickly was that the best thing to do would be to help devise a plan that works well um, and supports the effort of the private property owner there to get that going and make it a big success. But also not to depend on an exact date when the Walesville Hotel will be all the way ready to go in order for everything else underway. And so this is an example of that. Park Avenue does not have to wait for the Walesville Hotel to be finished to be a really meaningful and helpful boost to uh, restoring downtown and bringing people back uh, to the scenes you saw in that animation. So um, I, I think it's the answer here is, we, of course, we need both. We need all the downtown to do well. We need the, like, the, the Wellsville Hotel uh, to come back online as well. And I hope you see in the, in the imagery uh, a great effort on the part of the landscape architects to uh, set the stage for that, to, to make a great address for it again. Uh, so instead of just being a, a great architectural uh, artifact, beautiful thing, uh, it can be part of an even better neighborhood and uh, a great street scene. You know, Jay, uh, one question, uh, and this could be for you or for Bruce um, or for Michael, is about the timeline. Uh, when, when do they start this? When, uh, when might a shovel go in the ground? When is it before, say, completing the design, uh, going through the engineering and construction documents and then being ready to construct? So, so the construction documents are completed in March of uh, next year. 90% um, uh, will be done this, uh, 
uh, the end of this year. And then we'll bid in April, I believe, is the time when we'll bid, and then construction should uh, start shortly thereafter. That would be our, our, our hope by this time next year. Uh, there is construction going on on, on Park Avenue. Doug, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's the, uh, the schedule. That's correct. Great. Thank you. So we've gotten a few questions about the plant materials that are beautifully illustrated in uh, Boris Wong's uh, amazing renderings and, and animation. Boris, uh, thanks all that good work you've been doing. Uh, Jay, well, what are these plants? Are these native plants, for example? And uh, can you address the kinds of plant materials you would use so that it's right from a maintenance standpoint and uh, fit with the climate and also uh, you know, success in this environment? Well, interesting because we've 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 thought a lot about um, we've thought a lot about the uh, plant material and just the overall planting uh, planting schemes. And one of the things that's interesting about uh, uh, landscapes, the structure is in those trees. So we actually love the idea of having live oaks as kind of that structure tree that we're going to have in there. But but we also think that diversity in plant material is important as well. So um, we're going to look for areas where we can diversify the canopy. Again, the major structure being the live oak trees. But um, we're, we're, we're looking at a high number of native plants. And we, we think that there's a lot of showing us in native plants and especially in some of the rain garden areas. But when we come up onto the sidewalks, I think that part of the legacy of the uh, Bach Tower Gardens is that diversity. And so I, that's gonna have uh, many more ornamentals. Uh, I think we would have beds that will be changed out even uh, to have some annual and perennial beds. Uh, we're also thinking about uh, pollinators as well as um, you know, interesting plants. Um, you know, one of the things that, that you know, how can the community continue to support this I could even see having some of the beds that are changed out beds that people will um, actually sponsor or corporations can sponsor. Uh, there can be experimental beds. I think, uh, you know, everybody goes to, uh, or, or many people go, go to Bach Tower, but if, if we can bring people on to Park Avenue as well, where more people are gonna come to go to those restaurants and such, but they can, they can learn about what's happening at Bach Tower so there's this kind of synergy between the two. So, so, so we don't have a, a, um, an actual plant list at this time, kind of the, the overall idea. We want to take that theme of a botanical garden and bring that on to Park Avenue. So Jay, uh, talk, can you talk a little bit about the live oaks, which is a natural choice for the shade trees uh, from among the native species palette? Um, Megan asks, what I think is a natural question she says she loves oaks, but the problem is or has been in some Central Florida street, the root systems with, you know, especially with paper systems. Uh, so what are you proposing? To house, what's the planting detail? Would there be silva cells here or some other kind of uh, uh, system? Yeah, so, so what we're looking at using and it is uh, actually going with the structural, so structural soils that was developed at Cornell University and it's a, it's a it's basically Cornell structural so soils. Um, and it's an engineered soil that's got a lot of stone in it. And what that does is that's that stone. So we will come outside, number one, instead of having these in a, these trees in a by five tree grade, we've already got a much larger area. So we're, I think we're seven by 16 foot planting area, which gives you a lot more rooting zone. Uh, but beyond that, we're going to do a, a uh, I think it's about a 300 square foot uh, for, for each tree area of the structural soil. So that will basically go from the curb line more or less to the face of the building. And, and in that soil, the tree roots are allowed to go in that area, but it, it also creates a, a small airspace between the pavement that's on top of those root systems and, and, and the rooting area itself. And so that's going to, number one, uh, keep the, uh, because there's more 
oxygen and water capacity in the structural soils, they're not going to be heading towards the top searching for those things. Uh, and, and, and number two, that gap, that air gap is also going to do some pruning itself. And so uh, we're, we're going to spend actually, uh, I feel like it's almost like a utility. You know, utilities, uh, engineers, they spend all this money on pipes and such, and you never get to see it. But boy, I'll tell you what, if your toilet doesn't work, it's a big deal. Um, tree plantings, you have to spend some money to get the planting area right. A lot of that's hidden. You won't know it's there, but it, it's going to save so much money in the long run in terms of the sidewalk replacement, the, the root intrusion, and just the health of the tree uh, that that, that, that I think that that's extremely important. So I'm glad you asked that question. Thank you. Know, this, there's a question, um, Anna's asked a lot of questions, so Anna, I know we won't get to all of them, but uh, there's one that um, stands out since we talked about the intersections at first and at um, Scenic Highway. And that's, vision, or, or in this, you know, if you want to throw this one over to the engineers, uh, Doug, you, you, uh, he'll let you answer it. But the do you envision any way that this might inhibit the citrus connection buses or transit circulation? Um, I'll, I'll take it, Doug, unless you want to jump in. I, 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 don't, I don't think it does. It's all going to be totally functional. We're going to meet DOT uh, standards. Uh, I, I should really mention that, that we have talked with DOT about these ideas. Um, actually, Rick Hall and Victor have worked also to uh, try to identify the context classification system FDOT goes with uh, and, and, and really make sure that we can, within the structure of DOT, make this a livable street. And, and I think from a livable, livable street perspective, having a transit as a part Transit's of good. that is, 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 is the only part. The other thing that we didn't touch on is that that we've so the answer is no. This will not inhibit the citrus connection or any <laughs> yeah, other right. transit solution. Um, and, I, and Doug, if you disagree with what we just said, tell us now. I'm pretty sure that the traffic engineers would agree with what we just said. And you guys are spot on. No, but I'm glad she raised it because in the future, you know, we will have more people moving around by walking and biking, using short car trips or shared car trips. Um, we'd also like to have more people using transit as part of that menu. And so... Uh, this is actually setting the stage for that kind of evolution because, and uh, if it makes you feel any better about this, the when you exit a transit vehicle, you you become a pedestrian again, or or maybe you're a person um, uh, in a wheelchair, but you are once again on the ground moving back and forth, like those people in the animation that are having finding shorter crosswalks to travel, more shade overhead, uh, and more space to get back and forth from one to another. So a couple of uh, op one, one operational question, and then there's one question about implementation I think um, the first one is for you Jay um, and let, let me just go ahead and tell the others I'm going to ask the second one too then um, CRA chair Robin Gibson you're still on with us I'd like to uh, ask you a question about the funding the CRA funding but as it pertains to both downtown and the West neighborhood the extent to which those are um, combined or separate. So before you answer that, I want you, um, so you know it's coming, I'm going to turn to Jay with an easy one. Jay, you mentioned really briefly the idea that a parking space might be repurposed as an outdoor dining space. Uh, like as Anna points out in the chat, they do in Mountain View, California, and in, and in Clematis Street on West Palm Beach and a great many other places. What's the possibility here for that? I, I think the possibility is is great, and that's actually an operational decision uh, that the city can make. I, I think we, what what we found in these other communities, especially, uh, and Sanford had angled parking all along it on First Street, and it was a real battle to turn that to parallel. But by doing that now, um, it, it is a place to be where you've got great outdoor dining. And what happens is that the parking spaces are, are really important until it becomes popular. And then once it becomes popular, people will find their way there. And, and if you can make it walkable, the, the walk, you're, you want to walk. You, I mean, you want to walk in the area. You want to see what's going to go on. You want to traverse that area. So walking is if you just decide to drive there, but you walk away. And now it doesn't seem like so far because the walk is shaded and 
pleasant, right? right. And, but also and, it'll make it more attractive to people who might choose to take Uber or Lyft to get dropped off there. Or, right. Uh, well, and, walk and great food, great food is, uh, is one of the things that draws people. And I was encouraged um, at the uh, council meeting, I guess it was last month, that there, there are restaurants that are coming into town. And, uh, you know, there, there is nothing that drives folks like good food. And, and I'll go back to the winter, winter, winter experience. It's, it is the best restaurants in town are there in, in Winter Garden. The best restaurants in town are, are on that strip. In West Palm Beach, you find that being the case too. Um, and so I, I, I think that if we can make the environment that's going to draw the restaurateurs right downtown, that, that is going to be another critical piece. You got to get all the pieces to work together. But food is definitely one of those things that will draw people downtown, especially that's, after 5 p.m. All right, thanks. Vice, uh, Vice Mayor. Um, and CRA Chair Robin Gibson, thank you for being on that. The, the one last live question for you, and then we're gonna to switch to the polling and ask some uh, questions through the smartphone, and that's our wrap up for tonight. Um, and Commissioner, the question is about funding. What degree of funding has been identified already, and are the various parts of the greater Lake Wilmington project, like Park Avenue in the downtown or Lincoln and Northwest, are they considered separate projects for funding or um, how does this work? I know you are looking after the tax increment finance districts in both places. Do you want to take just a minute and explain where the money comes from, what's already on in hand and what will come later? I, I think what we, I'm, I'm one of five, of course, but we work very well together, the five of us. Um, I think we look at it as one project. And um, what we have right now with our uh, uh, CRA increment, we have about $2 million in the bank. We've got a revenue stream of about a million dollars a year. Now that's with the present configuration of the property values. With tax increment, what happens is the increment increment gets larger as the property becomes more valuable. To be able to do what we need to do, uh, I think we need to advance beyond what we have in the bank and uh, our revenue stream. We have worked with our experts, our uh, finance director has talked with them and we find that the, the way to do it for us is not such bonding uh, because of things that take too long to explain, but the better way to do it for us is with bank financing and payment of that bank financing with the uh, increment that is created now. So here's where all of this counts for so much, because what we're really doing is making a move toward attracting private funding, private capital. The way we attract private capital is by increasing the property values, the people who want to be there, we want, we are looking at the residential component as well as the commercial component. And all of that comes back to whether the decisions we are making, the designs you all have come up with, whether they are market acceptable. If they're market acceptable, and I think these are, certainly they've been demonstrated in other places, in this central Florida area. There's nothing like this. We will have a decided competitive edge. What we need to be is a destination. And as a destination, 
we increase our balance of payment. And when we increase our balance of payments, we increase the property values. We have got, this has got to be a great plan for this to work. I think it is a great plan. Um, I think there's some risk being taken, but I think it's a calculated risk. We have to realize that the ultimate reliance is on private capital mm -hmm. investment for something like this to be really significant. So well, thank that's you, where Mayor. we are. We've got, a, we've got a great start and we've got a great design and we, I think we have great prospects. Now we have one uh, last uh, group of questions that I'd like to get people to answer. And if you just joined in partway through the way you get started with answering mm -hmm. questions, if you've done this already, you're already set. I used to send a text to 22333 and the text that you need to send says Dover Coal 516. So use your smartphone. The address is 22333. If you haven't done this already, send a text message to that address that says Dover Coal 516. And with that, I'll ask um, Brenda Diaz to share your screen and let's have the last round of questions for tonight. Yeah, so you should all be seeing this first question is, do you like the curbless design ideas? And okay. Click yet, yes, you can see <coughs> no opinion or so if you, There you go. So if you, if you like the idea, send a text message that says yes. Uh, that is type A, send. If you uh, have no opinion, you can type B, send. And if you really don't like it, say not really. The answer is C, type C, press send, and we will get your response. I'd say the curbless idea is a winner so far here. Yeah. The first few, wait, let's give a few more seconds so people are still thinking about it mm -hmm. uh, to let us know if they are thinking not really or no opinion. Okay, so um, this should respond pretty instantaneously as soon as you press send. So uh, Brenda, tell me when you think we've yeah, got about all we're going to Yeah, let's move on to the next okay. one. Looks like that's a winner of an idea. I don't usually see 97% approval of anything related to the health <laughs> environment. So that's interesting. Now, uh, next, what, the way this one works is you type a word. Um, and uh, one word, just of all the ideas presented tonight, which one is the mo most interesting or important to you? If you thought the trees are most important, type the word trees and press send. If you thought the parking was most important, then press parking and press send. Or and if you, know, you just pick one word and press send. And if it's two words, for example, like hanging baskets, you use a hyphen to send it so it's connected. Okay. And then as your answers come in, they will, in the middle of our screens here, form a little word cloud. Now, the way that works is the biggest, boldest words are the ones we're hearing more often. So uh, more people have typed trees so far. So people have typed parking. And, um, and so those two, now shade shows up a little bigger. Destination has gotten a, a few more. The more of you who send an answer, the, uh, the more words will get in this screen and uh, give us the idea of what's on your mind. All the ideas presented tonight, which one stated in one word is the most interesting or important to you. Um, looks like, the uh, answers. yeah, lots of people are answering live in real time. Uh, looks like a number of people heard you, uh, Robin, when you mentioned destination. Um, yeah. There also, shade has gotten a lot of attention. Seating now is popping up as um, an item that multiple people have uh, have identified. Just let this continue to evolve for a minute. Mm -hmm. If you haven't figured it out, it is possible for you to now submit one and one answer to this question. So mm -hmm. um, if you would like to type a second one, you know, one more thing that's interesting or important to you, um, or if you've seen some ideas on the screen and you concur or you think that was a good idea, just send another message that has that same word and we'll, it'll appear here on our screen. Looks like the seating has gotten a lot of attention in the last few seconds with new, new responses. It refreshes every few seconds. This is interesting. I see equity has appeared on the list. That's good. Public dash transportation. You're figuring out the hyphenated word thing. Mm -hmm. Outside outside dining, horticulture, uh, parallel parking, two-way 
on the street, cyclists, creativity, food. Very informative. Um, yeah. And uh, so uh, we've had people, just to make sure we don't miss it, typing in the chat as well. Outdoor dining is shown up there. Mm -hmm. um, Sorry. Okay. Well, I think we can, now this is kind of stabilized. We've got a lot of good things to mm -hmm. go from here. Um, All right. We have the last question. Let's have it. The schematic design for Park Avenue's makeover is generally on the right track. It's not quite on the on the slide yet, there, Brenda. Oh, okay. All right, now it's now it's refreshed. So there's five different answers. There's yes, probably yes, not sure yet, probably not, or no. And you can type in the letter that corresponds with each answer. So if you think yes, type A and press send. Or if you think no, type E and press send, and so forth. And the Bars will adjust as more people have a chance to think about it and send in their answer. Mm -hmm. And Rhea, we hear you. I see not to be outdone. You've sent you've given us your answer via the chat, which is mm -hmm. good. You're on the record. Mm -hmm. uh, our answer was yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Lots of the details remain. You know, Jay mentioned that the there's a whole cost estimating phase to be done here. And um, and some uh, final arrangements to be worked out on the details of intersections, like uh, the one where the DOT is in control at, uh, at Highway 17. All right. Um, well, it looks like uh, you've got, for what it's worth, Jay, uh, the design you showed tonight received a lot of yeses and probably yeses. Uh, there are a couple of people here who are still wanting to get to you and ask more details. Um, and, and we note that. So there's a great chance for you to do it. Um, Brenda, if you'll let me share, mm -hmm. I will, um, I'll, re I'll reshare some, uh, one little bit of final instructions. Okay. So we were just doing the polling exercise. The last thing I want to remind people, especially those who might have joined us late or partway through, is that we can continue this conversation tomorrow. Um, from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m., there will be a storefront exhibit set up. At, look, you can see a picture of it here at 220 East Park Avenue. Bring your mask, practice social distancing. Karen Thompson will be there to answer questions. She'll be wired in to us and to City Hall. Uh, and from 11.30 to 1.30, Jay Hood, landscape architect you've been hearing tonight, and myself, Victor Dover, will uh, have virtual office hours via Zoom. So if you, uh, if you attended tonight, you'll receive an email with a link um, to join us tomorrow uh, via Zoom. So from 11.30 to 1.30, you can uh, click on that anytime within the time slot. It's on a drop-in basis. Um, Brenda and Michael will help. Uh, they'll, they can talk to you, answer your questions, or pass you into one of the virtual conference rooms with me or Jay Hood. So that's what happens next. With that, thank you all very much. We appreciate you participating. Uh, Lake Wales Connected starting with Park Avenue. Good night. Mm -hmm.